Oh, hello there. Welcome to Tech Tuesday. Today I'm talking about cable choices when doing my custom installation of the Philips Hue Lightstrip Plus system into the staircase here at home, which looks like this. Yes, lots of pretty colors. I'm quite proud of this staircase. Maybe you're familiar with it already. Well, the staircase was wired together and turned on for the first time last year. And since then, I've had quite a few questions about what cable did I choose to use? What connectors did I use? And other related decisions. First, the serious part of the video. <laughs> no, really, this is the disclaimer part where I'm not suggesting you hack apart your Philips Hue Lightstrip Plus system because it will void the warranty and you could also break it. It could go puff. And it's very difficult to get the white smoke back into things like transistors, resistors, capacitors. And the second thing is cabling, well, electricity. Enough said? No? Yes? Okay, it's not just about knowing what you can do or what to do, it's also where you are in the world. There are certain rules in some parts of the world that say you can, as a hobby, work on appliances and repair them and modify them. But in other parts of the world, you can't do that. So I don't know where you are. So in this video, I'm simply sharing with you some decisions that I made, and I'm not recommending you do anything. The cable that I went with is a Belden 5504UE. I'll put the details in the description. I'll give you two reasons why I selected this cable, and I'll compare it to an ethernet cable. Because when you start searching the interwebs, you'll find people talking about doing custom lighting installations using Ethernet cable. And I want to very clearly tell you why I didn't use Ethernet cable and why I selected the Belden 5504UE. Two reasons. The first one was kind of pretty obvious. Look at the size of those. The big thick one, the chunky one, uh, that's the Ethernet. And the thin one, that's the Belden. There's not a lot of difference, but when you start handling these cables, the Belden just feels like a premium cable according to the specification. It's got a better bending capability. And the Ethernet, well, I mean, it's a cable designed to handle signals, right? Let's get into now power handling capabilities. Ethernet cable Yes, people will say and argue that, hey, but hang on a minute, power over ethernet. Isn't that electricity going over the ethernet cable? Well, yes, it is. So if you look at the PoE, the power over ethernet specification, I mean, jump on Wikipedia and have a look. You can see here at most 960 milliamps per pair. That's how much current a pair here can carry. So you could kind of say, what, one, two, three, four, oh, in a best case scenario, this could easily carry over three amps, give or take a few. It doesn't really work that way or that well. If we take a bit of a more a modest approach, we've got 600 milliamps per pair uh, on one of the lower specifications. Now, the amount of current the cable would be able to handle depends on the quality of the cable, what's the rating of the particular cable, what POE specification is it stated to handle, right? You see there's variables here. So it's not just any ethernet cable to handle power over ethernet you need a good quality one to handle the higher power ratings. But when you look now at the AC-DC converter that comes in the Philips Hue Lightstrip Plus pack, it says right there very clearly it outputs 24 volts, 830 milliamps, so 20 watts of power. So 830 milliamps. And yet we just looked at the PoE specification, and on the one hand, 600 milliamps, so it's too low, but in the best case scenario, the PoE with the perfect Ethernet cable is supposed to handle 960 milliamps. Well, yes, technically 960 is bigger than 830, but nah, that's too close to, for my comfort. If we now look at the Belden cable, it is a security and sound cable. It's designed to be able to handle power limited controls, so meaning you can 
have power going through the Belden cable. It's designed to handle power and handle signals, Ethernet signals, but they figured out how they could put power over it, right? You, you see the difference? Now, if we look at the actual power handling capabilities, the Belden on a single conductor, so a single wire can handle 300 volts and two amps. So let me put this scenario to you. If this power brick, which outputs the 830 milliamps, so less than one amp, if for some reason, when this power brick connects to the controller, so the actual, uh, the, the next piece in the chain that connects it to the LEDs, if for some reason it would all short circuit and down a single conductor, it would try to put the entire output of this brick, what would you get? Well, you would get 24 volts, 830 milliamps, so less than one amp. One of the wires in the Belden can handle two amps. You're not even, not even halfway. It's not going to break a sweat. It'll just go, oh, this is unusual, but fine. It'll just handle it. That's the second reason I went with the Belden. So there you go. Size and size. Or another way, physical size of the Belden cable, smaller. And the electrical current maximum capabilities of the Belden cable, bigger. Smaller, bigger. You get it? Okay. Look, I hope this was useful, but it wasn't advice. I wasn't recommending anything. You were just curious what I did, and I was happy to share with you why I chose this one over this one. Stay safe with whatever you're doing, wherever you are. And next Tech Tuesday, I'll share a little more information about the Philips Hue staircase custom install. Next time I'll talk about connectors. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed Tech Tuesday today. Some more techie details next week and far off into the future. <laughs> Bye for now.